Hello, welcome to the first part of the series Factorio Concepts. In this series we are going over some concepts how you can improve your factory design, especially in terms of space efficiency. In this episode we're going to talk about belts, undergrounds and splitters. So let's get started. At first we have the three different types of belts, undergrounds and splitters. As we can see the undergrounds have one uh, specialty. Uh, each consecutive um, tier can reach two tiles uh, longer underground. So I think that's already it. We're gonna have to talk about the transportation speed because this will come useful later. The transportation speed of a yellow belt is 15 items per second. The red one can transport 30 per second and the blue one 45 per second. So it's double and triple the amount of the yellow one. Next we have the splitters. They have some more functionality. By clicking on them, we can set the input priority, output priority and filters. Filters are very useful. So, And they will balance the two inputs of uh, themselves to the two outputs. So keep that in mind. This will uh, come useful for balancers uh, later on. Okay, that's a very fast overview of the six different uh, items for transporting with belts. Next we have the concepts of belt weaving. We can see this up here. Belt weaving means that the belts go under each other, which is physically impossible, but a very useful game mechanic. So as we can see here, the, we can fit more belts in a one high space. So this makes your factory significantly uh, smaller when you're using this concept. The downside is the use of different undergrounds and when upgrading this may cause some issues from red to blue and yellow to red and so on. As we can see if we have all uh, three different types of belts we can transport double the amount we could normally. We have two blue belts inbound and two blue belts outbound and here in the middle section we can see we only need a one high space for 90 items per second. Yes, very useful. Next we have another one. If we don't want to use different types of belts and undergrounds, we can fit uh, two, uh, I mean uh, three different or same whatever lanes into a two high space which is also an improvement. Next we have side loading, side loading of undergrounds especially. This is shown here or we can see it better like this. As we can see only the top part of the belt can transport, uh, gets transported into the underground belt. Let's show this detail. If we put some items on this belt, uh, yeah, let's put uh, two different items so we can, this is where it's mostly used if you have two different items on the belt and you only want one of them, you can do it like this and as we can see only the copper plates will get transported further. And if we don't want to block the iron plates from progressing any further, we can use, where is it? Down here. We can use this concept. So we have a splitter before 
which allows the copper plates and the iron plates to pass on the left side of the splitter. And on the right side we have an underground belt which only, uh, allows only the copper plates to pass. Okay, next up we have a belt side swapper. So as we can see, the copper plates on the bottom will get transported to the top and vice versa. So that's one thing. I don't think it's super useful, but it exists. Then we have, uh, let's talk first about balancers. Yes, balancing your belts is uh, especially useful for the inputs of large uh, factory blocks, for example, huge smelting arrays where you want your smelteries to run uh, equally. So you would uh, put a balancer between the output of a train station and the input of your smeltery, something like that. And as we can see, this one is a 4x4 balancer, uh, balancer, four belts inbound, four belts outbound, and as we can see, the four outbound belts are equally filled with items. Of course, we can put more in here, but this uh, yeah, this balances the belts, so yes. Next we have lane balancing, so each side of the belt gets balanced so that if we are only drawing from one side of the belt, we are ultimately uh, drawing from both sides, as we can see here. This is a two high design, but it's quite long, and this one is a three high design much shorter. Yes, that's already everything about balancing. One more tip about it. There is a blueprint uh, book available. It's called Bilker's Belt Balancers, which contains just about all combinations of input to output belts that you will ever need. So just Google it and you will find the blueprint book. Next on the list, I want to talk about a new concept I encountered uh, on the Reddit, uh, Factorio Reddit. It's about multiple different items on one side of a belt. As you can see here, we have six different items inbound and the belt is perfectly balanced so that uh, each consecutive item on the belt is a different one. So yes, the downside of this concept is the need for the uh, roundabout. So the belt needs to come back so it can balance itself. This means if you have a factory block and you're feeding into with such a belt, you will need to uh, find a way to route the lane back to the beginning so it can balance it, uh, itself. Yes. Uh, with alt mode, we can see that we need to set filters for each item and the um, why it works is because we have here yellow belts on one side and blue belts on the other. And if we remember from the beginning, the yellow one can transport one third of the amount a blue one can. So if we have three yellow ones inbound, they can put, uh, they can be put together on one blue belt. And that's uh, basically it. The balancing act is because of the splitters and the um, the filters. Yes, that causes the belt to be always balanced. If the belt is stuck and you don't see it rotating anymore, this means that something is wrong. Maybe an item has uh, got to a lane where it shouldn't be or it's too unbalanced so that it gets stuck 
just empty the lane and it will work fine. Let's have a little look. If we're using red belts and yellow ones, uh, yellow ones, we can put up to four different items on one belt. Let's put some plastic and some electronic circuits on top. And as we can see, it fits perfectly. And yes, it's just wonderful. Uh, especially useful is this technique in combination with a mall. As we can see here, I came up with this mall using the concept. We are having two blue belts with uh, six items on each, six different ones. And this uh, feeds the whole block. It goes uh, counterclockwise around and comes back to be balanced again. It's, uh, it doesn't have the highest throughput, keep that in mind. So, but especially in a, in a mall where we have many different items needed, this works, uh, yeah, this works very fine. Uh, fine, I mean. Okay, we can also use this technique to put more um, items of one type than the other one. So we have a red and a yellow one on this one. So we have for uh, a ratio of two to one, two green circuits and one red circuit. Let's stop it so we can see it better. For each red circuit, we have two green ones. This one is used in one of my blueprints. I can show this very quickly. So it's used in here, yes. Uh, there I have some space. As we can see, uh, I connect it up and it's basically used to increase the ratio on one belt between green and red circuits because blue circuits need so many green circuits but very few red ones. So on one belt segment as seen down here there will be uh, about two uh, greens, one red and additional three greens on the other side. Yes and that's that's the ratio. So it's basically a 5 to 1 ratio for greens to reds. Let's show it in action. Okay, some water. And now it should work. As we can see here, I'm Okay, let's, there we can see it. This is basically what feeds into the block and this is enough to feed 15 uh, assembling machines tier two. Yes, another example uh, is prepared up here. It's about the red circuits. This one down here uses um, one side for of a red belt for greens and the other one for plastic. Then one full belt of copper to feed the uh, copper cable production and another red one for the copper cables. This makes it in total uh, eight no, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven high. And by using this technique where we put uh, one uh, plastic and one green circuit on one side of a red belt and on the other one the copper cables, we can reduce the space to just six. So it's one tile smaller than the other one.
yes, this is uh, as already said, this is not great for big throughputs. Uh, so if you want to put some beacons on top, this wouldn't be enough. So it's only in some special cases very useful. Okay, that's the overview of some concepts you can do with your belts, undergrounds, and splitters. So thanks for watching and bye.